This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the example to do with basic consolidation. Uh, so what you've got here, uh, usual situation, uh, says Ray, a public limited company operates in the manufacturing sector. Uh, the draft financial statements and the statement of financial position for December 2015 are as follows. Uh, you can see you've got Ray and you've got Finn. Okay, as yet, I don't know who the parent is, who the subsidiary is. Uh, but, but what you've got there is to read the requirement, isn't it? So it says prepare the group consolidated statement of financial position. So it wants our position statement of Ray. So Ray must be the parent. And uh, is the year end the 31st of December 2015. Okay, so we know Ray is the parent. Uh, we know, therefore, then that maybe presumably the other company finished the subsidiary. Uh, let's have a look, shall we? Okay. Uh, the, the way that these questions tend to work, oh, this is a very, very basic question. It's not P2 standard, but I'm trying to get P2 style into it. Okay. And by that, all the information at the start of the additional information relates to the group structure. So it is everything to do with the group accounts. So what you've got here. And it said on the 1st of January 2014, so that's two years ago, okay, Ray acquired 70% of the equity interest of Finn, okay. Uh, so Finn must therefore be the subsidiary, mustn't it, okay. Uh, for a cash consideration of 1340 million, wow, that's a lot. Uh, the identifiable net assets had a fair value of 1850. So it's actually telling us the fair value of the net assets. OK, uh, that's a common way uh, of giving you the information within a P2 exam question. It tells you the fair value of the net assets. OK, uh, it tells us that the retained earnings were 450. So we can have a look in a moment what the share capital, the share premium may be. And it says the excess in fair value was due to an item of property, plants and equipment that has a remaining life of 10 years. So it doesn't tell us what the fair value adjustment is. It tells us that any fair value adjustment that there is, is to do with PPE. It tells us that it has a 10 year life. So whatever the fair value adjustment is, it will need to be depreciated over 10 years. But it's just a bit different because we're not given that fair value adjustment. But if we're given the fair value of the net assets, we can work out what the book value is and then compare it to the fair value. And the difference will be the fair value adjustment for PPE. Okay. Uh, group policy is to measure NCI at its proportionate share of the fair value of the subsidiary's net asset. So you don't see this much from, from F7 because everything there was on the full goodwill method and, and the fair value of the NCI. Here, we're looking at the proportionate share of net assets. So we'll need to take 30% of the net assets at the acquisition date. Uh, a bit of extra information sort of jumps out of you really because you weren't given anything else other than the parents results and the subsidiaries results here. It says on the 1st of July 2015, so is that halfway through the current year, we acquired 25% of the equity interest of Ben for a cash consideration of 200 million. Uh, the profits for the year were 80. A dividend of 20 was declared on the 31st of December. Uh, and it says we have the power to participate in the operating and financing decisions. So we have influence. So therefore we have an associate, don't we? OK, so we will deal with the associate as and when is necessary towards the end. But what you've got, think about exam technique at P2. It's totally different from the days that you saw in those glory days of F7. Because remember, when you did 100 percent of P and 100 percent of S and added them across, you, 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 get, you got credit, didn't we? None of that nonsense now. Yeah, if you had across 100% of P and 100% of S, plop, yeah, no marks whatsoever. Oh, don't cry about it, okay? Yeah, don't get too upset. It's just the way it is. So what I would recommend that you do is start with the workings. So what you've got there are our workings. Um, what we're going to do with our workings, we're going to do our standard working number two. Forget number one, it's too easy. And we're going to look at the net assets. We're going to go through there and look at the net assets. I still say year end. Essentially, it's at the reporting date. I also go through there 
and look at it at what happens at acquisition and then you also have it there is it in the post acquisition period uh, so what I will need to do is I will need to find those figures won't I from is it the share capital so the share capital of the sub at year end is a thousand and the retained earnings at year end are 800 so I can put in is it 1000 I can put in is it 800 that's my share capital that's my retained earnings isn't it we know that the share capital at year end is exactly the same as what we had at acquisition so that's a thousand okay uh, the retained earnings at acquisition were 450 so we can tick that off we've dealt with that that gives me 450 okay leave yourself two or three lines because we're also told aren't we that the fair value of the net assets is 1850 so that needs to total 1850 isn't it okay does it total 1850 no what does it give us yeah 1450 so we've got a fair value adjustment it specifically says within the question that that's for ppe isn't it so what we're going to do is we're going to have to put in a balancing figure to, to make it balance so a thousand plus 450 is 1450 does that then mean that the fair value adjustment to acquisition must be 400. Okay, everyone happy with that? Yeah, it's just a balancing figure. It's the, the difference between the book value of 1,000 plus 450 and the fair value at 1,850. What then happens is that the acquisition fair value, we're not told that that's changed. So we assume that therefore that will be the same at 400. We then have the depreciation. Okay. Be very careful because for the depreciation, it's 400 over 10 years, isn't it? So it's 40 per annum. But we need to multiply that there by the two years, don't we? Yeah, because we bought it on the 1st of January, was it 2014? So what you've got there is a year end, the net assets are 2,120 uh, and gives me post acquisition, is it of 270, okay. So all I've done there is 2,120 less than 1,850, double check, don't want to be making any mistakes do we, is it 270, okay, everybody happy with that there, yes, excellent. Uh, and you don't directly score any marks there straight away, but you know afterwards, don't forget that they will need to adjust for the fair value and the depreciation on the face of the group statement of financial position, won't we? So when we do the consolidation later, we, we'll update for that figure. Uh, what we then got is working number three. So working number three, isn't it, is to go through that and to have a look at the fair value of The consideration so what did we pay uh, we paid is it the 1340 okay so we've paid is it 1340 the non-controlling interest at acquisition uh, remember this was on the proportionate share of net assets wasn't it so we own 70 so the NCI own 30% of those net assets at the date of acquisition I think the net asset to acquisition from working to uh, were there as 1850 weren't they okay uh, and then what we do is we just then deduct the net assets and again add the NCI I would then just deduct working number two at acquisition okay you don't believe me there we go okay 1850 okay the net assets at acquisition 
So 1340 plus 1235 less 1850 uh, gives me there is that goodwill of 45. Okay. Voila. Okay. Everybody happy with that bit there. There's no impairment. Keeping it nice and simple. Uh, working number four. Remember, working number four is the non-controlling interest, isn't it? So we take the non-controlling interest at acquisition from working three. So was that the five five five? Okay. Uh, to which we add on is it thirty percent of the post-acquisition profits? Why thirty percent? Well, if we own seventy. The NCI owns 30, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, Y270, well, that is the post acquisition movement in the net assets, isn't it? 270. Uh, 270 times 0.3, that gives me there is that 81, uh, which gives me is it 636. Uh, again, as it stands, just a quick check. I don't think that, that there was any impairment, was there? Okay, none at all. Making life easy. There we go. Okay. Uh, then what you've got uh, is it working number five, uh, which is your group retained earnings. So we put in, is it 100% of the parent retained earnings? 100% of the parent retained earnings are the 1450. So 1450. I then add on 70% of the post acquisition profits. Again, no, I'm not writing in any explanations. I'm just putting in the numbers, okay, and showing where the numbers come from. Uh, the marker will be able to identify what you've done if you label things up clearly, okay. Uh, so you've got 70% of 270, is that there's 189, okay. Uh, again, we're going to have to put something in. Of the associate, I'd always leave yourself plenty of space in working five because when you get to real exam questions, the adjustments in there are, are huge. Okay, uh, but for now, just a, a line or two will suffice. Before we then go through that and have a look, is it at working six the associate? So we go through there and look at the cost. So the cost of the associate is there. Is it as two hundred? Okay, I think that's the amount we paid. Uh, we equity account, so using our 25% share, isn't it? So the profits for the year were 80, weren't they? But be careful. Yeah, 1st of July. So we've only had the associate July, August, September, October, November, December. Six months, okay? So we need there, that's where you need to be careful. 25% of 80 multiplied by 6 twelfths. Okay, so 80 times by 6 divided by 12, 40. I could do it in my head, but just to make sure I don't make any daft mistakes. And 25% of 40 is 10. Okay. Uh, the other bit that I just wanted to throw in is the bit to do with the dividend uh, because we've actually received our share so 25 percent of that dividend and that dividend is a reduction isn't it within the investment that we have within the associate so we need to take 25 percent of that dividend which was 20 so is that there as five okay so what you have there is that that is P share of A's dividend. Again, everything that you tend to see with the associate, unless there's an impairment, we, we always adjust for our share. Okay, so we've received 25% of that 20 million, we've received 5 million. So effectively, what we're doing is we're receiving the cash, so, so debiting the bank and then crediting the investment in the associate. Okay. Again, key bits to make sure that everything balances. You need to, to look at the adjustments there for the 10 and the 5. So what we need to do there in working 5 is you need to put in 10. You need to put in 5. Uh, 
Again, you don't need any detailed narrative explanation about what it is. Just refer it to the working because the marker can then see what you've done. Okay. So I think that gives me 1644. Okay. Excellent. You've worked your way through the workings. There's no other additional information. So this is purely just testing the group knowledge that you have. So what we can do now is we can actually do the group statement of financial position. Okay. Uh, so what you've got there is we can start off, can't we? Is it with my property, plant and equipment? So we've got there, isn't it, as 100% of the parent and 100% of the subsidiary. So 1560 and 1250. Don't forget, however, you had there, was it 400 as the fair value adjustment? So is that there from working number two? And was it also the 80, which was the depreciation? If you're thinking about marks within this exam, you will get one mark. I'll put it in red. One mark for each adjustment that you make. You don't get any marks at all. So you get zero and zero for adding across 100% of P and 100% of S. Okay, That's why I've left it until the end now. Because what's the point in spending time adding things across early on within the exam when you know you're not going to gain any marks? So 3 1, 3 on. Uh, goodwill. Uh, that's the working number three. Uh, so what we've got there, I think, was it 55? I can't remember. Oh, 45. Good job we checked. So. Goodwill is there as 45. In total, that in this instance will, will be three marks maximum. So if you've got 45, the marker goes tick and gives you the three marks. If not, the marker will go and look at your answer. There are three lines, aren't there? And potentially one, one, one. Okay. So you can either get one, maybe two, or nothing at all if you've got it totally wrong. Okay. Uh, so do make sure. To help the marker out, to give you every chance of passing reference, your numbers back to your workings. Uh, we've then got, is it the associate? So the associate, was it working six? I think it was 205. Check. It was 205, so all good there. And then you could work out your, your total non-current assets. Don't bother within the exam. You don't get any more credit for it. So what we could then do is we can look at the current assets. Is it inventory, receivables, and cash? Again, bracketed workings. Here, personally, I've got to do it because I've got to show you how to do it, but you're not going to get any marks in the exam. Okay. Uh, you add across the 450, the 580. So 450. Plus 580. There was no pub adjustment. Okay, so be careful. If there was a pub adjustment, you would need to adjust for it. So that gave me 1030. Uh, the receivables 380 plus 390. Uh, is that 770? 770. Always check the number of times you see people add things across and get it wrong because they've not used the calculator. It's a useful bit of kit. Uh, cash 190 plus 230. Uh, 3, is that 420? 420. There we go. My mental arithmetic gets worse the older I get. Okay. There we go. Excellent. Again, what you could do. If you so wish, you could total that up, okay, to work out the total assets. Nothing like getting that achievement, is it, where it all balances. So 3130 plus 45 plus 205 plus 1030 plus 770 plus 420. So I think that gives me total assets of 5, 
600. Okay, happy with that there. Let's hope it balances. Uh, then what we've got is the equity section. So we've got share capital. Remember, it's a hundred percent of the parent share capital only. So is that one seven hundred? So we've got the one seven hundred. Uh, group retained earnings are the is it as working five? So is that one six four four? Uh, if you wanted, you don't have to, but just to show what things are fully, uh, that's three three four four, which is essentially the amount that is attributable to P. That's what the parent owns, isn't it? Its share capital, its retained earnings, and then any share of the post acquisition movements in the sub and the associate. Uh, the non controlling interest was those working for. So that's 636. Uh, does that give me, is it 3980? That essentially now is the group equity. Okay. Excellent. Uh, and then what you've got, just to go through and finish it off, uh, we've got some liabilities to deal with, isn't it? So non current. 520 and 350. So 520, 350 of that 870. Uh, and then trade payables 300 and 190. Is that 490? And then my tax payable 150 plus 110. Gives me 260, doesn't it? So I had 3980 previously on my equity, didn't I? Let's just check. Yeah, 3980. Plus 870, plus 490, plus 260. Even if it doesn't say 5, 600 on your calculator, pretend that it does. Because at least you can be happy that, that it balances. But it does say 5, 600 on my calculator. So that's pretty nifty. Okay. So the equity and liabilities at the bottom are equal to the assets on the top. Okay. The only bit that I would also go through and just talk about is the investments. We've ignored the investments, haven't we, of the 1540. Why? Because what we've gone through and done there is you can see, can't we, uh, as it scrolls down, that you've got the amount that we paid for the sub is 1340. The amount that we have paid for the associate is 200. And we ignore those investments, don't we? Because for the sub, we prepare the consolidated financial statements for the group SFP. And then for the associate, we put it separately an equity account. So we ignore the 1340. We ignore the 200. So is that 1540? Uh, so that matches up to the investment figure in P's SFP. So we can ignore that investment there. Okay. And I really like that question. I know it's ridiculously simple. I know it's ridiculously straightforward. But it's brilliant to see how a real style question works. You're given the financial statements, you're given the additional information. And 99% of the time, the additional information starts off with everything to do with group accounts. OK, then after what happens after that is is nothing normally to do with group accounts. It's just purely to do with accounting standards. But we'll worry about that when, when we build up to the, the bigger P2 style questions a bit later on. OK, but other than that, if you're unhappy with anything, feel free to work it through again. Check back to the model answer. If, if you're still stuck, we're there on the forum. So feel free to go through and ask any questions that you so wish. Other than that, I'll see you in the next session where we introduce a, a, a fractionally smaller new bit into the world of the group statements of financial position, talking about other components of equity. 
行，一旦